Two major indicators to watch for to know when the car shortage is ending. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homer Guy, and author of Is That the Best You Can Do? Well, I'm here today with the amazing Elizabeth, and we're going to share some information that's laying right in front of you. And just by being aware of it and knowing how to get your hands on it, well then, you'll know when you should consider buying a new car again, or a new-to-you car at least. And knowledge is power, and this is some awesome information you can have with minimal amounts of work. So before we jump into today's subject, I'd like to call attention to our community page and the many polls that we do there. The more of you who respond, the more great data we have to share with our viewers. So love to see more of you on our polls. If you see a current poll on our community page and received a notification of it, we'd appreciate your participation. All right, let's discuss the two significant factors to know when the car shortage is ending and car pricing is starting to get back on track. Well, these are the same factors that we're tracking here at the Homework Guy channel, and you can help us track this in your community and report back to us as you see things changing. Factor number one, inventory on car lots. Inventory. Inventory. Have you noticed the empty dealer lots or very slim pickings on dealer lots around the country? Dealer inventory is a huge indicator of where car pricing is at in your area. Totally true. If the lot isn't full, as in busting at the seams full, well, that's a dealer who's not motivated to negotiate with you on anything and a dealer who has prices going through the roof. It's a waste of your time and your money to be talking to a dealer who doesn't have plenty, and I mean plenty, of inventory. And we just did a video the other day on how much over MSRP people are paying for new cars. Check it out. It gets a ton worse than the examples that we gave. Listen to this comment. Only one car on the showroom floor, and here's where the dealer has it priced at. Chad writes, hey guys, missed the poll, but I have one for you. I was on the road and had to fix my 08 Sequoia at a dealer. While I waited, I went into the showroom. There's only one car in there, one, <laughs> and it's a Land Cruiser. Well, the sticker was roughly 90,000 bucks with a dealer market adjustment of <clears throat> $30,000. Yikes, that's insane. But it clearly points to what we're saying about car inventory. No cars in the lot. That's a dealer who has prices so fat you shouldn't even waste your time there. Chad continues to say, well, furthermore, it had just sold. So, you know, there's a sucker born every minute. Somebody <laughs> was willing to pay it. Unreal. Well, prices like that are more of a financial <laughs> IQ test and yes. somebody flunked their basic money classes. Indeed, they did. All right. To make sure you didn't miss this, dealer inventory is one of the major indicators that the car shortage is ending. So watch for it in your area. When the lots start filling up with cars, normalcy is coming back to the car market. So when the dealer lots are three quarters full or half full or just looking very thin as in slim pickings, you shouldn't be out car shopping. You say an empty car lot, just wait. The market isn't there yet. So a little housekeeping before we jump into major indicator number two, you hear and see how valuable the information is here on the Homework Guy channel. It's just amazing, guys. Join our dynamic group of followers and subscribe now. Remember to hit that notification bell as well. Ding, ding, ding. So you don't miss a thing. You know that? And check out all of our other videos. 46 million people have already benefited from our great content. And you may as well be just as lucky as them, right? So comment below. Comments are really important to helping with the YouTube algorithm. And it helps others find the great content too. Besides the great content out there, Liz, everybody in our audience should know that you can ask a question in the comment section. And don't be surprised when one of our many seasoned followers, because of, we have a lot of people who've been following us for years, well, one of those people will give you an answer yeah. in addition to somebody on our staff. So our followers do it all the time. Well, we have the best viewers out there, Kevin. All of you are always pitching in to help each other out. And we greatly appreciate your generosity and your kind support. Yes, thank you. All right, major indicator number two. This one is far more subtle than the inventory indicator. This one is connected to zero cash down financing. Well, think of how many of you were able to finance a car over the last few years and dealers were advertising zero cash down car deals. The newspapers and the radio and TV ads are filled up yep. with these zero cash down deals all the time. Well, have you noticed of late? It's been crickets on the zero cash down deals right now? Well, the answer is simple. Banks haven't adjusted their book values. If you understand what an LTV ratio is on your car loan, it stands for loan to value ratio. Loan to value is a key to the bank letting a car buyer go with a zero cash down loan. Bingo. And if you understand anything about LTV that Liz just mentioned, well, you'll be familiar with the fact that there are banks out there who routinely write loans that are 110% LTV, meaning that your loan exceeds the value of the car by 10%. Yep. 
There are also banks that might do 120% LTV, or in some cases, they might stretch to 125% LTV. That's a loan that's 20% or 25% fatter than the value of a card. Those are really bad loans, yeah, you guys. Don't but take those. No bank wants to write a loan with 150% LTV. And right now, banks aren't letting car buyers, even if you have excellent credit, banks are not letting car buyers do zero cash down loans. They shut it down. Why? Because the selling price of the car isn't worth anywhere close to the actual book value. And the bank is not adjusting those book Good. values, as Liz mentioned. You market geniuses out there should not be wondering why the bank is not adjusting their book values. Yes. The banks, by their own actions, not adjusting the values, are saying they know that these inflated prices are nothing more than a temporary money grab by car dealers and has nothing to do with the actual cash value of cars. So use your heads, people. The oh. behind the scenes financial geniuses are telling you that those cars aren't worth anything close to the selling price. So they are demanding that dealers collect cash from you if you're gonna do that insane car deal that they're proposing. That's why you have to have big fat cash down to do a car deal when just a short time ago, you were bombarded by ads trying to get you into a dealership because you could do zero cash down. Yes, the very fact that bankers won't let you pull a car loan no matter what your credit is without putting cash down, lots of it, tells you the dealer is totally gouging on the price of the car. It's a money grab <laughs> and you should not be buying a car right now. So again, major factor number two, is the disappearance of zero cash down deals. This information today is like pure gold to your pocketbook. Indeed it is. Watch these two factors, car inventory, and wait for the dealers to refill their lots and to return to zero cash down deals. And you'll know the market is finally back on track. It doesn't mean it's perfect. It right. means it's finally back on track. Of course, we'll continue to publish updated information to keep your car buying skills sharp. So when the time comes, You'll be just as savvy as anybody here on the Homework Guy team and our behind the scenes folks when it comes to dealing with car dealers. You got some inspiration today for us, Kevin? <laughs> they pe people kind of liked the last episode. Yeah, right they really there. enjoyed it. All right, that they did. So, and that's really encouraging to hear you guys, by the way. So if any of you missed it, check out our previous video here and watch it all the way to the end. Yeah. There's some really great stuff on it. It was like an upside down yo play. We had all the fruit on the top and a message of inspiration at the end. Hey, have you been watching uh, Mitch Hetberg again? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> well, okay. Well, Liz, you introduced the victor versus victim mindset in the last show. It's a big part of what the Homework Guy team focuses on outside of the show, particularly for any of you business-minded folks out there and people who like to be in charge yes. of your own life. It's impossible to change anything in your own life without embracing that victor mindset. We refer to it as the above the line thinking and it changes everything. So let's put that graphic up on the screen so people can see what we're talking about. Check it out. Above the line is the victor and the attributes that the victor embraces are illustrated by the acronym OAR. O -A -R. They are ownership, accountability, and responsibility. And if you embrace those things, you're a victor type person and you get a lot more out of life because you don't let yourself make a bunch of excuses for your own failures. You don't do that kind of stuff. Like that last time you really made a stupid car buying decision, well, you owned it. A victor recognizes the mistake, doesn't do it again, fixes the problem. And that leaves below the line. Here are the victims. The victim mindset has the acronym BED, BED. They are blame, excuses, <laughs> denial. Think about something. As long as you can blame others, as long as you can make excuses for your own mistakes or failures, and as long as you deny the truth, even when it smacks you right in the face, well, Ouch. life is easy for you because you don't have to change a thing. Every mistake, every problem, every foolish move you make, you get to blame it on somebody else yeah. when you have that victim thinking. Life never changes for you because you don't ever change a thing. And if you have the victim mindset, you're kind of like wallowing in your own self-pity and Indeed. you share that misery with people around you. So keep your focus and your mindset above the line yep. as much as you can because it matters to everything. Nobody is perfect, we aren't perfect, but awareness of how important this is to everything in life has changed our lives. Everyone on the Homework Guy team embraces the victor mindset and our colleagues too as well, Liz, they yep. embrace it. Well, except my ventriloquist friend. You have a ventriloquist friend? Yeah, he claimed to be victimized by everything. You could hear him whining like a mile away. Oh no, I can't believe you just said that. Did you guys get that? <laughs> well, speaking of getting it, if you got our message today, give us a huge thumbs up. 
and make sure you share this video with your family and friends. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell, ding, 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 so you don't miss a thing. Also, as you said earlier, comment below. Comments make a huge difference to our algorithms and they do your neighbor a favor by helping them find this content too. So leave us some feedback. You got it. Thanks everyone for joining us today. Remember to watch for our community polls and we'll be back with another great video soon. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, here with the amazing Elizabeth. We gotta, we gotta go. go. A ventriloquist whining a mile away. <laughs> uh. He throws his voice, you know. <laughs>